In this video, we consider the properties of the estimator in the linear regression model for time series data. So we consider the usual linear regression model, y t equal x t prime beta, plus epsilon t, t, 1, 2, all the way to capital T, which is our sample size. We make the usual assumptions of predeterminedness. We assume that y t and x t are stationary. And finally, that there's no perfect multicollinearity in X. We've shown that predeterminedness implies a moment condition, which we use to derive the method of moments estimator. And we've discussed how stationarity and weak dependence of Yt and Xt implies that a law of large numbers and a central limit theorem holds for the data. And finally, under the assumption of no perfect multicollinearity in X, we can compute the estimator which is given by beta hat equal to the following. In this video, we make a simplifying assumption that x only contains one variable, so we set k to 1, and we moreover assume that the expected value of xt is 0, so that the unconditional mean of x is 0. Now, to study the properties of beta hat, we can rewrite the estimator by plugging in for yt, which gives the following. Now we can multiply into the parentheses here and note that then the sum of the xt, xt primes cancel out. So what we're left with is an expression where beta hat is equal to beta. That's the true parameter. And then we get a second term, which we call a sampling error, which is given by the following. So again, the estimator can be written in terms of the true parameters beta plus a sampling error. Now the first property we want to show is that beta hat is an unbiased estimator, which means that the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta. To prove this, we need to make one more assumption, which is the assumption of strict exogeneity, stating that the expected value of epsilon t given x1 all the way up to x capital T is equal to zero. Note that this is a stronger assumption than the assumption of predeterminedness, which is implied by the assumption of strict exogeneity. So to show that the estimator is unbiased, we first consider, consider the conditional expectation of beta given x1 all the way to x capital T. We simply plug in the term for the estimator that we have over here, which gives us the expected value and then we get beta plus the sampling error. Conditional on all the x's. Conditioning on x, we can treat that as fixed and we get instead beta plus like this. Note now that the expression we have here is equal to zero this is a consequence of our strict exogeneity, assumption number four. So under the assumption of strict exogeneity, this is zero. And we know that the expected value of beta hat given all the x's is just equal to beta. So this shows that the estimator is conditionally unbiased. Now we can show that it's also unconditionally unbiased. And we use just the law of iterated expectation. So we write the unconditional expectation of beta hat as the unconditional expectation of the conditional expectation given all the x's. And again, we note that we have just shown that this is equal to beta. So this is the unconditional expectation of beta, which is just beta, which proves that the estimator is unbiased. So it's conditionally unbiased, but it's also unconditionally unbiased. Next, we want to show that the estimator is consistent. So that means that the estimator beta hat converges to the true parameter beta as the sample size t goes to infinity. So this is an asymptotic property. As the sample size increases, the estimator converges to the true value. We need two components to show this. The first is that the probability limit for t going to infinity of the expression we have here, 
1 over t. And because we only have 1x, we can write it as a sum of from t equal 1 to capital T of xt squared. So this is the probability limit of the sample average of xt squared. Well, that converges to a constant sigma x squared, which we assume is positive and finite. The condition here states that the limit of the second moment should be positive and finite. Since we have assumed x to be stationary, we know that it, the second moment is constant over time. We know that the sample average converges to the population expectation, which is what we have here. The second requirement is that the probability limit for t going to infinity of the term here in the denominator, 1 over t, the sum of t of xt epsilon t. Again, due to stationarity, that converges to the population expectation. And we know from the moment condition that this population expectation is zero as xt and epsilon t are uncorrelated. Now, as a consequence of these two requirements here, beta hat converges to beta plus, we have two terms here, the numerator converges to zero and the denominator converges to uh, sigma x squared. So this is just equal to beta, which indicates or which shows that we have a consistent estimator. If we have it over here, beta hat converges to beta as t goes to infinity. Finally, let's look at the asymptotic distribution. So this is the distribution of the estimator as the sample size goes to infinity. We need two more requirements. The first is the requirement of conditional homoscedasticity, stating that the expected value of epsilon t squared given x is equal to a constant, which we call sigma squared. Then we need another assumption of no conditional serial correlation, which is condition or the assumption that epsilon t, epsilon s, conditional on xt and xs is equal to zero. Under the assumption of predeterminedness plus these two assumptions, note that we have now the condition that conditional on x, the expected value of epsilon t is zero, the variance is sigma squared, and they are not serially correlated over time. So these three assumptions together imply that we can describe epsilon t as an IID process with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Note that we have so far not said anything about which distribution. We just say that it is the same distribution in terms of the first two moments and in terms of no serial correlation. And this is conditional on xt. Under these assumptions, a central limit theorem holds, and it can be shown that if we subtract the true parameter beta from beta hat, that gives us just a sampling error, and then we normalize by the square root of t, then that will converge in distribution to a normal distribution with mean zero and asymptotic variance v. Note that this is an implication of the central limit theorem, and again, it does not depend on epsilon t being normally distributed. In our simple case here, v is given by sigma squared divided by the expected value of xt squared. So this is essentially the variance of epsilon t relative to the variance of xt. Now from the expression here, we can find that the variance of beta hat is equal to t inverse multiplied by v, the asymptotic variance. So note that this means that the variance of the estimator collapses at a rate of t. Finally, we can use the result that square root t multiplied by the difference between the estimator and beta is asymptotically normal with mean zero and variance v. We can multiply by the inverse of the square root of t and that gives us that the sampling error is asymptotically normal with a variance of t inverse v, that's the result we got down here. Finally, we can use this to show that beta hat has an asymptotic distribution, which is normal with mean zero, and then we replace t inverse v with natural estimators, the t cancel out, and all we're left with is sigma hat squared multiplied by the sum t equal one to capital T, xt, xt prime, Invert. So this is the asymptotic distribution of the estimator, which we can use to conduct inference, to do tests, and so on. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.